All right, before we get into the code portion of this and look at some examples, you'll need to download a text editor in order to create some HTML. Now, there are many free text editors on the web that you can download to get started. I'm on a Macintosh computer, and I'm going to be using this program called TextMate. This is free. You can download TextMate. This is the program that I'll be using. If you're on a PC, I would recommend you start out with the program called Notepad++. So this program right here is a great free program that to get you started editing and writing HTML in Notepad++. There's many other alternatives. There's on the Mac, there's Coda. We have Sublime Text. There's Dreamweaver. So the, there's several options. Look down in the project notes, and I'll have the links to several of the text editors to get you started writing some code. All right, once you have your text editor downloaded and installed, go ahead and launch it up, and let's create some code. You can, in theory, just use Notepad on a Windows or text um, edit on a Macintosh to write HTML code. HTML code is nothing more than text. So any text editor, anything that'll write text, you can actually create web pages and write web pages. You don't need to buy any proprietary programs to code for the web. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'll delete this first line. We're just going to start from scratch. I want to build this straight from scratch to give you an idea of the code for a web page. So I've created a new document here, and I'm just going to save this document. So I'll say File Save. And I'm going to name this document index html and i'm just going to save it onto my desktop i recommend you probably create a folder somewhere and store your index.html file inside of that folder to keep things organized but i'm going to keep mine on my desktop for now just to keep things easier to locate so i've called this document index.html for a reason index.html is typically the name of the home page of your website so web browsers will automatically pull up this file when somebody types in your domain name.com. So almost always your main page of your site will be called index lowercase .html. So go ahead and save that document and let's create our first web page. Now we're going to be referencing the same syntax we used over inside of this PowerPoint slide to show you the HTML document structure. So again, the first line is the doc type. And the doc type starts with an angle bracket. That's the shift comma and shift period. You'll be using these quite often. And you can see the program I'm using, as soon as I insert the opening angle bracket, it automatically inserted this second one for me. So different text editors will have what they call code completion, which will help you write HTML code a little bit faster. They kind of guess at what you're going to be typing next and automatically insert that. So your program may or may not have that feature. If it doesn't, you'll have to type that yourself. So inside of here, we have an exclamation point, and then all in capital letters, doc type, and then space, and then in lowercase, HTML. And you can look over here from this um, example in the PowerPoint slide. That first line there is the doc type. This happens to be the HTML5 doc type, and we'll be using HTML5 throughout this tutorial. Um, but if you want to use the XHTML doc type or any of these other doc types, I'll quickly show you what those look like. HTML is HTML5 doc type is much cleaner. The other doc types, let me go ahead and insert the HTML doc type here. And we'll uh, insert doc type. Let's do the 4.01 transitional. This is the doc type. You can see it's quite a bit more messy for HTML4. And the XHTML doc type is also very similar to this. So you can see how it's quite a bit cleaner using the HTML5 doc type, which is why we'll stick with that. But if you re if your project requires HTML4 code, then you'll want to use the HTML4 doc type. Now, after the doc type comes our first HTML tag. You can see back here from the, the project, we have an HTML, and this HTML tag has an attribute and a value. Lang equals EN. EN stands for English. So let's go ahead and type that out. So open the angle bracket, type HTML, and then lang equals en. Notice the double quotes there. Now, another feature of this particular program I'm using is what we call syntax highlighting. You'll notice that this is in gray, and this property is in green, kind of a green color, and these are in this brown color. Most code editors feature this syntax highlighting. So different HTML attributes and tags and codes will appear as different colors in your markup code. And that's just to make it easier on the programmer to visually 
uh, target into different attributes and values rather than having everything just a simple color. So it makes your code much more readable. All right, inside of that um, HTML tag, you'll notice that it closes down here. So I always recommend people when they're starting out, whenever you open an HTML tag, you must close it. That's one of the rules of XHTML is all tags that are opened, here's the opening tag, must be closed. There's the closing tag. So you can't ever have just an HTML tag without a closing tag. Make sure that if you ever open one, just get in the habit of closing it immediately. And then you come inside of the tag and one tab space over because we're going to be building the head section next. So we'll say head and I'll tab that over. And I open the tag, and so I come down here and I close the tag. You can see my program automatically put it right there. So there's my head section. And while we're at it, let's add the body section. So I'll add the body tag, open the body tag, and close the body tag. So the HTML is the parent, head is the child, body is a child, and you could say that body and head are siblings because they're both children of the HTML tag. Remember, that's why we did one tab space over. So get in that habit. And I'm going to save my document to make sure my, my program happened to crash. I don't lose all that work. So let's come back into the head section because there's a few things we need to add in here. The first one is called this meta tag. And this determines or sets rather the character set for my web page, which we're going to set to UTF-8. So let's add that. Come up inside of here and tab over. And we'll say meta car set equals utf-8 like so and uh, that looks good now let's come back over here you can see there's one more which is the title so we're gonna add the title next and so we're gonna say title and this is my new page and then we close the title tag so we open the title tag and we close the title tag now notice we opened the meta tag but we didn't close the meta tag. And that's because the meta tag is what we call a self-closing tag. It doesn't have a close meta. There's really no such thing. But to satisfy the rules of XHTML, all tags that are opened must close. So we simply put a slash in front of the closing angle bracket on the opening tag, and that satisfies that rule. So this is called a self-closing tag. Some tags like the image tag and input tags for forms, web forms, they're all self-closing like this. Most of the HTML tags, however, have an opening declaration and a closing declaration both. So kind of be aware of that. There's a few nuances there. So the title tag, we've got that in place. We're going to look and see what that does in just one second. Uh, let's go back and finish off this page. So we have our header one tag. We looked at this tag earlier. Remember, it creates a page heading. So we'll come down inside of our body section Make sure that we're tabbed over one space because header one is a child of body. And we'll type h1, and this is the heading. We'll close the header one. And the next tag below this, we'll just do a paragraph tag. P stands for paragraph. This is the paragraph of the website following the heading. And then we'll close that paragraph tag. And notice that ran down onto the second line, but that's just fine. So we have an opening paragraph, closing paragraph, opening heading, closing heading, and this page is now complete. So I'm going to save this page, and now we can preview this page in the web browser. So we'll jump back to our finder window, and here's my HTML page. You'll recall I saved mine on my desktop. Now, depending on what operating system you're on, if you're on Windows 7 or OS 10, OS X, Macintosh, this will behave differently. So what you want to do is you want to right click this and say open with and then pick a, a web browser out of the list. You may have Internet Explorer, Firefox or Safari or Google Chrome, Opera. Any of the web browsers will work just fine. So choose a web browser and this will open up your newly created web page inside of a web browser. And you can see here is the header tag. So this is the heading and here is the paragraph. And you'll notice the very top up here up in the title bar it says, this is my new page. So this again came from that title. This is from the title, which is up in the head section. Now the title tag is very important. The title tag is what will appear 
as the blue links inside of Google. So if I go back and type a uh, text editor again, I'll just do a quick Google search here. All of this text that's blue, the big links inside of Google, this is what the titles are for these particular websites. So it's very important that you come up with a title that's unique to your website and, and uniquely describes the content on it. You have a much higher chance of getting your website clicked on inside of the Google page results if your title is relevant and catchy, I guess you could say. So don't just put a title um, like I've done here. This is a bad title. You would want to put a title that's relevant to your content. Like maybe I sell um, snowboards. So snowboards or whatever your websites would be about, right? So, all right. Now back here to our web page. Um, I'm gonna show you how you view the source code again. So if we right click inside of here and we say show page source, this shows the source code. So again, this should exactly match the source code that I've typed in to my web page here. It's just a one-to-one -one copy. The source code makes up the structure. This is the HTML and the structure of the web page. And this is how it's visually displaying inside of the web browser. So now we've completed really our first web page. We'll get a little bit more complex and start introducing several more tags into your repertoire.